Conflict 47 is the Weird War 2 game from Warlock Games. It depicts a continuation of World War II, albeit with sci-fi elements like high-tech weaponry and genetic engineering. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to paint one of the units from that game. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and today I'll be showing you how to paint the Galahad Armoured Infantry of the British forces. As always, my first step was to prime the model. Primers help to create a surface that paint can properly adhere to, as well as giving us a uniform colour to start the painting process against, which is especially important when you consider this model is metal. There are many methods of priming, be it aerosol, airbrush or brush on, and what you choose is always entirely up to you, as is the colour. However, I've chosen to use a grey primer here, as it will allow us to more easily apply both the lighter and darker colours that we'll be applying in the next few steps. Before I began to apply any paint to the model, I first thinned it out a little on my wet palette. For my base coats, I find that a mixture of roughly two parts paint to one part water is an ideal ratio, and you're looking for a consistency similar to what you see here. With the paint thinned, I could start to apply my mixture. I started off with some leather brown because this would form the base colour for the fabric worn beneath the armour. Generally, when base coating my models, I like to start in the most recessed areas first. These are usually harder to reach, so painting them first means that I can avoid accidentally spilling over onto other areas in the model that have already been painted when I try to reach them. The leather brown was a good starting colour for representing World War II British fatigues and afforded some contrast against the armour panels, which I was going to paint green. Because I had thinned the paint, I wasn't expecting perfect coverage with the first coat. After this first layer had been applied across the relevant areas and allowed to dry fully, I then went back and applied a second layer over the top. This resulted in a more solid looking base colour that I could build up from. Additionally, it helped to ensure that the paint was applied smoothly and that I wasn't left with brush marks in the paintwork. As I've already mentioned, this thinning and layering technique is something that I repeated across all of the following base coats. Now generally, if I know that I'll be applying the same shade of wash over several different base coat colours, then I prefer to paint all of my base coats first. This allows me to apply the washes in a single step before moving onto the highlights. It's also helpful to see the model progressing at each stage, and it prevents me from accidentally ruining a good chunk of the paint job with these often messier starting applications. The next base coat that I tackled followed that same principle of painting the more recessed areas first and then working my way outwards. This time I began to paint the metal panels on the armour. I chose Venom Worm for this step because of its slightly olive coloration. It's fairly close approximation to the colour used on British tanks in World War II, which helps to lend a little credibility to the sci-fi take on historical setting. To paint the leather areas of the model, which included the pouches at the front of the model, the straps around the arms and legs, and finally the gloves. For all these areas, I chose to use werewolf fur. This slightly different shade of brown to the earlier applied leather brown afforded a degree of contrast between the two materials, and helps to improve the model's overall level of detail. If you're familiar with my tutorials, you will know how I like to paint metallic areas on military models with the very dark grey of Necromancer Cloak, and this model was no exception. Necromancer Cloak is generally better to use than a pure black because you can add a wash to it to create some shading. In addition to this, it also works really well as a basis for a black and steel effect, which is what I was using it for here. With this paint, I tackled the weapon, the vents on the backpack, and the exoskeleton of the armour. For the small area of exposed flesh on the face, I began by applying a base coat of cobalt skin. I find it particularly useful for skin tones because it's a little lighter and so allows me to get the most out of the flesh wash that I applied later on. The final base coat that I applied to the model was True Copper. In regular bolt action miniatures, this paint probably wouldn't have found much use, but in Conflict 47, it's a great for being used on the more technical aspects of these models. For this particular miniature, I painted the tanks at the back, as well as the cables running down the left arm. Against the green, this colour really stands out nicely and creates some better definition of the model. 
Now, after I'd finished using this paint, I made sure to properly clean out my brushes and paint water. As I was going to be using non-metallic paint for my next few steps, I wanted to ensure that I didn't have any cross-contamination of metal flakes into the other areas of the model. At this point, all the base colors had been applied and I could begin to apply my washes, but much like the base coats, I needed to thin them down. Instead of using water, I used some of the Army Painter's Quick Shade Mixing Medium. It's essentially the wash, but without any pigment in it. By mixing this in equal parts with the wash, I was able to maintain the same paint consistency, but reducing the strength of the wash. This helped to create a more subtle shading result. With the wash mixed, I was able to begin applying it to the miniature. The first wash I used here was Strong Tone, and this was applied across the whole model, with the exception of the skin and the areas that I painted with Necromancer Cloak. This wash flowed into the recesses and, as it dried, darkened them down. Having darker colors in these recesses created the appearance of shadows and helped to improve the level of detail on the miniature. For the areas that I had base coated with Necromancer Cloak, I applied a wash of dark tone, thinned in the same way as before. The black coloration of the wash allowed me to achieve some shading over these dark gray areas. The only remaining area to wash at this point was the skin, and this was coated in the made-for-purpose flesh wash. Personally, I like to thin my mixture down for this just a little bit more than I did for the last few steps, and then apply a couple of coats rather than just the one. Doing this helped with some of the facial features and helped them to stand out a little bit more. Once I had completed the washes, the next step to tackle were the highlights. For the first few of these, I used the base color of an area mixed with some arid earth to create a lighter color. Mixing the two paints in equal quantities resulted in something that had a similar hue but was lighter. I also went with adding a little bit of water here too, just to make the paint easier to use. I started off with a mixture of leather brown and arid earth and used this to highlight the fatigues that were worn beneath the armor. To highlight, I made use of a fine tipped brush and carefully dragged the tip over the raised folds and details. I tried to focus my application on these highlights to the upper areas to help simulate how light falls. By adding lighter colors with these highlights, I created a stronger contrast between those areas and the darker recesses that I created with the washes. This resulted in a much more detailed looking miniature. Now these highlights were entirely optional. I could have just used the miniature as it is currently, and this would have been fine. It would have kept the painting time down and allowed me to get a good number of these models painted up much faster. But if you wanted your miniatures looking their best, then I would recommend adding these highlights. For the armor, I used a mixture of venom worm and arid earth to create a sage green color. This was put to use over the harder edges of the powered suit of armor, which helped to create some differentiation between the plates. The leather straps and gloves were tackled in the same manner as the first two steps by creating a mixture of werewolf fur and arid earth. For the skin, however, I opted to use some of the lighter skin tone of Corpse Pale. Here I applied thin lines to the tops of the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, and finally the lips to help to add a little more depth to them. Finally, I just needed to tackle the metallic areas. I wanted to add a slight metallic sheen to those areas that I had base coated with the Necromancer Cloak earlier on. These areas, while dulled, would reflect some light, especially if they've been scratched or worn down. To represent this, I applied a very fine edge highlight of gunmetal. To add a little more definition to the areas of the copper pipes and tanks, I opted to use some of the metallic paint Weapon Bronze. Once this was completed, all I needed to do was to apply a suitable basing scheme, give everything a coat of matte varnish to remove any glossy sheen, and then apply some static grass, which should leave you with something that looks like this. And here we have the completed Armoured British Infantryman for Conflict 47. Now this particular scheme can be applied to any Galahad equipped models in your K47 British armies, and can easily be adapted to other nations' power armoured units too. So thank you for joining me with this painting guide and I hope that you've enjoyed watching and that you've been able to learn something from it as well. As I said, all of the paints that were used in the creation of this guide can be found at the bottom of this video's description. If you'd like to support me and pick up some bolt action or other historical miniatures, then head on over to War Games using my affiliates link below. Anything you buy or send a little money my way at no extra cost to yourselves. And if you enjoyed this guide, then please do let me know, along with any other Wargame painting guides 
do you like to see me tackle next? So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye. Mm -hmm.